the classes were initially held through Zoom, uh, although nowadays it's used through Microsoft Teams, which is a similar concept to Zoom, uh, just right. not as user-friendly. So I'll just start off with a couple of announcements. The, um, the midterm evaluation process at this point, it's like there's like a new system in play where it's going to be like a paper form that you, the student, will present to your preceptor. Um, it's still like in beta mode, so it's not rolled out to everyone. So you don't have to worry about like having a formal midterm evaluation for this rotation. Although, um, if there's a preceptor that you spent time with and that knows you, it's a good opportunity to ask them how you've been doing, what do they think your strengths are, what are your weaknesses. Um, so just because there's not like a formal thing in place, still it's a good opportunity for you to try to understand where you're at and like your um, clinical education uh, journey. Um, also, there are uh, some questions about, do you have to show up to your rotation the day before the MBME? So the MBME is important. And yes, a lot of your grade does rely on that, although you may not have many opportunities to get this clinical experience, not just as a medical student, but at the rest of your medical career. And so, you know, I think it's important that even if your preceptor does let you have off on Thursday, maybe suggest that you'd want to go in, you want to have the opportunity to see more patients or to get more exposure because to be honest with you, four weeks is not much for psychiatry. A lot of other medical schools, my medical school, the six weeks rotation. So you already take a day for didactics or for study time. So, you know, you don't work weekends. So you have a lot of time in the four week rotation to study. So to take a day off beforehand to study, you know, maybe you can. I, I'm not sure it's the wisest move, to be honest. Um, assignments, I, you guys are able to post the assignments onto Canvas. The PowerPoint presentation uh, that you did for the case presentation also post, uh, there's a written form of the case presentation, essentially what you do in the PowerPoint, just in a, like a written format. And then also, um, as Dr. Rubin said in the orientation about AA meetings, so it's also in the syllabus uh, to attend an AA meeting. Uh, a lot of them are virtual. Uh, it could be local or wherever. Uh, and just write you know, a short paragraph or two about the experience of the AA meeting. And just post that all up to Canvas by the end of your rotation. Dr. Claude, I had a quick question about that. Um, so for the AA meeting thing on Canvas, is that just where we submit the addiction report? Is that the AA meeting one? Yeah. Okay, and then so in the handbook, there's like a separate form for the addiction report. Instead of doing that, you just want us to do the paragraph? You can do either or. I think it's easier if you just do it on your paragraph. Okay. As long as you have it and there somewhere. Okay, thank you. Um, you, Can we submit our PowerPoint presentation too? Because there's not a spot for that, or just the written report. Um, I think both. Is there not a spot for the PowerPoint? No, no. there's not. Okay. Okay, then just do the written report. So today was the didactics day. And so how it's set up is that the uh, students will have a case that they saw in their rotation, either in the hospital setting or clinic setting. 
and they will uh, essentially talk about the case, um, research some articles uh, about an interesting uh, event or circumstance in the case, and then I will provide also uh, some of my insights or understanding or other perspectives. I don't know why they were trying to do this, and this was the reason for his agitation and shouting, which ultimately caused his mom to call the police. Um, it is unknown that the patient had another prior hospitalization in 2018 after a similar episode, which caused him to become... Especially active. having your child taken away, I'm sure there's a, there's a few other traumas that came along with that that could be contributing to her, her anxiety and her, you know, her, her fear for her safety or things along those lines. Um, or a heavy cannabis. So it can get tiring uh, listening to all these case presentations and talking about these cases. So I usually will take a 10 to 15 minute break at least every hour or so. And um, where I turn off my camera, I turn off the mic, etc. Uh, and so sometimes I'll go to, on walks uh, today. Um, it's a little bit cold outside. I didn't go for a walk, but I listened to, um, picked up from where I left off of a sermon I was listening to. Uh, earlier today, and of course, um, embarrassingly, I accidentally did not uh, mute it. So, if any uh, of the students who were uh, listening um, during the break or by their computers may have uh, heard this, write them down and pray for them, and ask a faithful friend to pray with you as you are going through. Uh, these steps to uh, know the will of God. With uh, my extended family, but he's really close with the nuclear immediate family. So he might not be able to ask for help from people outside those like immediate family members. But in those. Uh, thanks for, for that presentation. Um, I hope okay, a lot of things came to mind with that case. Um, what are your guys' thoughts about um, cannabis or what, what else do you guys think about cannabis and people often say it helps treat their anxiety. Or medical cannabis, what are some of the indications of medical cannabis? Yeah. Any other indications? I know some derivatives are used for seizures, but for very specific types of seizures. All right. Like severe chronic pain. Yeah. Uh, and it, it wouldn't be first line treatment for chronic pain, although it can be indicated for essentially pain not controlled by other means. Um, psychiatrically, we don't recommend cannabis. So uh, I can't tell you how many times I'll have a patient say I use cannabis because I think it helps me. Uh, and to get to the underlying problem of their psychiatric condition, it makes it much more difficult. Uh, and so one way to conceptualize it is like, so do you guys know the mechanism of action of how cannabis affects mental health? You guys have heard of this component THC? So THC is like considered the psychoactive component to cannabis and so what that does is it actually binds to like the cannabinoid receptors in the brain and so when that happens it elicits like this calming response. So when people like smoke and get the THC they get a little bit of a calming sensation in that. So what happened? the body like has that response naturally. So if you sort of keep using that system, just it's probably gonna deplete itself. And so that natural like calming response is going to be affected. And so that's where a lot of withdrawal reactions happen. Anxiety, irritability, um, your mental status, you mentioned how she was angry, irritable, I mean, it sounded like she was having withdrawals from cannabis, and if she was just maybe had like a hit or something, she'd be able to calm down or she'd feel better for that moment. But psychiatrically, we don't, we really don't recommend it. 
Um, also, what do you guys know about like the brain development? I have some thoughts about that. Like, and when does it's thought like the brain is like fully maturing or like regions of the brain are maturing? Until 25, right? Yeah, more specifically, what are some thoughts? Like what part of the brain is thought to take that long to mature? Is that like the frontal cortex? Frontal yeah, exactly. So there's a notion about the prefrontal. A few other parts of the job that uh, happened today is met with uh, one of the associate deans of research to discuss about um, getting more students involved in research. Apparently, uh, there's several students in, interested in mental health and especially during the pandemic and want to research some stuff. Um, also, uh, some for previous students that went through the rotation, uh, needed to contact some uh, of their clinical preceptors because they need to get their evaluations done in a timely fashion, and then that's not happening. Um, they're not returning my calls or messages or how to deal with that, but thankfully the uh, clinical um, dean uh, stepped in and helped out and got was able to get in touch with that preceptor. And also, a uh, nice surprising news to the day, I, the school offered me some uh, tickets to the Kings game, uh, VIP tickets, uh, complimentary food and drink. So I'm a pretty big Kings fan, uh, even though it's hard to cheer for them sometimes. Um, so thank you uh, uh, for that. And that's a day in the life of a psychiatry clerkship director.